All right, so, uh, so let's look a little bit at, at how the labor market is organized. So what constitutes the labor market? So this, what you have here, is quite a useful graph. Uh, this is um, data for 2014, uh, and that's for the US. Okay, uh, and so this is showing you how the uh, US population is allocated to different categories on the labor market. So you have your total population at 320 million. So this is uh, everybody. Okay, so now what we are going to focus on here is the share of people who uh, are part of what we call the civilian uh, population, non-institutional civilian population. Uh, so this is what you have here, that's roughly 250 million. So who is part of that civilian, uh, non-institutional, civilian population? So first, it's non-institutional. So it means that you're not going to have people who are um, first in the army. Um, and second, people who are institutionalized um, you know, in jails and prisons. Um, so. So people who are part of the armed forces and people who are imprisoned uh, are not going to be uh, part of that uh, non-institutional civilian population. And in addition, there is also an age constituent. So here, because we are looking at people who can work, we are going to eliminate uh, children. And so in fact, the non-institutional civilian population is only for uh, people who are above 16 years old, okay? The children are not, are not counted here. Okay? Uh, below 16 years old. But anybody who is not in the army, not in prison, and who is above 16 years of age, with no uh, age limit, is going to be part of that non institutional civilian um, population. Now, that population, that civilian population, so these are essentially all the people who potentially could work. Okay? So these are, the, these are potential workers. Okay? So these are all the potential workers that we have in the US economy. They are going to be split in two categories. The biggest category is the civilian labor force. In 2014, that was roughly 156 million people. Um, and then, people who are not part of the civilian labor force are people who are out of the labor force. That's roughly, you know, 92 million people in 2014. So what's the difference between being in the labor force and out of the labor force? So that's very important to understand. People who are out of the labor force, these are people who uh, do not have a job, And that's not sufficient. In addition, you also do not want a job. Okay. Um, so these are people who are just not interested in uh, in working. And so that can be a lot of things. Um, you can have people who are retired. You can have people um, like you guys who are at school. So you're above 16 years old. So you're part of the civilian population. But, uh, you know, you're studying full time, so you're not interested in having a job. So that will make you out of the labor force. It could be parents, you know, who stay at home to look after their children. They are also out of the labor force. Okay. So now, people who either have a job or do not have a job but want a job, these are people who are part of the civilian labor force. And as you can see, you'll have two categories. You'll have people who have a job. These are people who are employed, that you have here. Uh, roughly 150 million uh, at the time in 2014, and then you people who, who do not have a job but want one, these are people who are unemployed, roughly 10 million in 2014. Okay? Uh, and so, uh, so here, when you talk about unemployed worker, it's important then to understand what it means from a statistical perspective. So, as we've said, these are people who you have. 
um, two key ingredients here, and it, it's important to understand these two things. So first, to be an employer, of course, you cannot have a job, that's clear, but also it has to be that you want a job. And um, the specific question usually in surveys that are used to uh, measure the number of unemployed is whether you have been searching, whether you've been searching for a job in the past, uh, in the past few weeks. That's how um, the government figures out whether you want a job or not. Um, and if you haven't been searching for a job, then you're not counted as unemployed, but you're counted as out of the labor force. So it's important to know what it means when I show you numbers of unemployed workers. Uh, you need to want a job. That's really a key, uh, a key characteristic. Okay, and so um, here, if we so when you talk about an unemployment rate, which is something that we are going to uh, look at a lot, how do you compute an unemployment rate? Well, the unemployment rate is always telling us the fraction of people who are unemployed not in the total population, not in the civilian population, but in the civilian labor force. So it's very important to, uh, to understand that. Um, so when we're talking about unemployment rate, we look at the number of unemployed here and we compare that to the number of people in the labor force here. Uh, so your unemployment rate, for instance, in a situation like this, if we wanted to compute it, we would have unemployment rate it would be, you know, one, it would be, sorry. Um, Nine point five divided by one fifty five point nine. So you know it would be something like um, six percent here. Okay, so that's how you compute the unemployment rate by dividing the number of unemployed by civilian labor force. So it's important to always uh, remember that. Okay, so that's our setup. Um, now let's move. And try to understand a little bit how people move from one category um, to the other. All right, so um, let's uh, look now at how people move across categories on the US labor market. Um, so the graph that you have here, it's an average. Uh, so that's again for the US. Um, so that's your US labor market. And this is an average since uh, 1996 and going on to 2014. Okay. Um, and um, so you see in your different categories, these are measured in million, and the flows that you see across the different categories, these are also uh, millions here. Millions of workers. And these are monthly flows. Okay. So what we can see is that during that period in the U.S., the number of people who were employed was uh, you know, 139 uh, million. The number of people who were unemployed on average was 8.8 .8 million, so not very far from the number we had on the um, previous diagram. Um, and then the number of people who were out of the labor force on average during that period was 77 million. Okay. So these numbers are roughly uh, in line with what we saw on the previous diagram. Um, the numbers are not, ex not exactly the same because this is an average you know, over a longer time period and the labor market has been growing, especially the number of people out of the labor force has been growing over time, which is why you have a number here that's a little bit lower than on the previous um, diagram. But what's very interesting here is the dynamic aspect of the labor market that you can see. So, um, you can see that you have a lot of people who move between categories. Um, so let's try to see a little bit what all that means. So you can see that you have a lot of people who move here within employment. Um, so these are people who have a job, but then leave their job and start a new job. Um, so here, what you have, are um, this is a, a flow that shows you people who quit. So these are quits. Uh, people who leave their job uh, voluntarily and usually because they have another job offer and move, uh, move to a new job. Okay? Uh, this is something that could be here. 
So then you can see that you also have a lot of movement between employment and out of the labor force. Um, so you can see here that you have uh, 3.4 million people on average who leave employment to go out of the labor force. So what could that be? Well, one typical uh, worker here would be retiree. Uh, retirees are going to leave employment to move outside of the labor force. So that would be a typical example. Uh, you can see that you have similar flows here from outside of the labor force towards uh, employment. So what could that be? So here you would have recent graduates. They were outside of the labor force because they were at school um, and they are moving to get a job. You could have people who you know, stayed at home to look after their children and decide to, uh, to get a job. Um, so people who were previously uh, stay-at-home parents and who decide to uh, start working again. So you have these, you have uh, fairly big flows between outside of the labor force and employment. Okay? You also have big flows uh, between employment and unemployment, of course. Um, so you can see roughly 2 million people who leave employment and go towards unemployment. So these are people who uh, for instance, got um, laid off. So these guys are going to lose their job uh, and move to unemployment. You could also have some quits actually in here. If you quit your job and do not immediately have a job, you would also be uh, on this type uh, of flow. So layoffs are usually initiated by firms, quits are initiated by workers, that's the difference. Um, and then people go to unemployment and there they look for a job because remember to be part of unemployment you need to be actively searching for a job and then after some point you're going to find a job so these are people the so 2 million uh, workers here every month who move from unemployment to employment so these are newly hired uh, workers here okay um, so then the last flow that we see are people who move between unemployment and out of the labor force. So you can see, again, around 2 million workers every month move from unemployment to out of the labor force, and another 2 million roughly move from out of the labor force to unemployment. So what are these workers? Um, so unemployment to out of the labor force, this is, these are typically workers who search for a job, cannot find one, and get discouraged. Um, and so you could have this, what we call discouraged workers. So these are workers who you know, would like to work, serve but at some point because they cannot find a job, they just stop searching. Um, and they move to out of the labor force because once you do not search, you're not counted as unemployed. And so this is telling you that the separation between unemployment and out of the labor force is not perfectly clear cut. So there is a gray area. There is a group of workers who are really in between. Um, they would like a job and maybe they are not searching as much as what is required of them in the statistics. And therefore, they are counted as out of the labor force, but in fact, uh, you know, they very much would like to work. Uh, so these are what usually we call discouraged workers, or sometimes you will hear the term uh, marginally attached workers. Uh, and similarly, you can also see people who move from out of the labor force towards unemployment, and this could be, this could be the same uh, type of people as the people we saw moving from out of the labor force to employment. So this could be recent graduates. Uh, but who are not able to uh, get a job upon graduation, they move to unemployment, or stay-at-home uh, parents who are not able to get a job upon starting to search, and then they also move towards uh, unemployment. Okay. So what's going to be key here is to, to see that there are really big flows between, uh, between these different categories uh, of workers. And that's something that we're going to model very carefully this semester. We're going to pay a lot of attention uh, to this flow because, as you can imagine, what we're interested in is um, we're interested in understanding you know, what if, why we have this uh, 9 million people here. We're going to be very interested in that. Um, but to understand why we have these 9 million people who are unemployed here, we need to understand you know, this is a flow of a stock of workers. We need to understand the flow that contributes. So we need to understand why people here move from employment to unemployment, how fast people are able to move from unemployment to employment, because if you have a lot of people who can move back to employment, that will reduce the number of people who are unemployed. If you have a lot of people who come from employment to unemployment, that's going to increase a lot the size 
of the pool of an input. So these two flows that I've just highlighted here, this one and this one, we're going to be very interested in that because these two flows are going to be key factors in determining the size of the pool of an input um, people. And so a natural question, of course, is why are we not, you know, what's going to happen with these other flows here that we have? What's going to happen to these people here and these people here? Um, so it turns out that something that um, we know is that actually these flows between unemployment and out of the labor force are very stable over time. So if you want to constantly, these two millions of people moving from out of the labor force to unemployment and two million moving back to out of the labor force, these are very stable over time. So it's like a constant in and out that doesn't really vary. And as such, it's not going to help us understand why the number of people who are unemployed varies so much over time. So actually, we are not going to pay too much attention uh, in this course on about uh, too much attention to these two flows. And in fact, we are not going to pay too much attention either to out of the labor force. Um, just because that um, they are not, there is not a lot of action happening between unemployment and out of the labor force. And in fact, there is not a lot of action happening here either between employment and out of the labor force. These are things that exist, but that the size of these flows do not change much over time. And so it doesn't really contribute to explaining why the number of unemployed varies so much over time. These other flows, the one I highlighted at the beginning, this here and here, these flows are going to uh, vary a lot over time and they are going to be the key to understanding why unemployment moves so much uh, over time. Trying to understand why you have people moving from employment to unemployment. Sometimes people call that the E to U and why we have so much people moving from unemployment to employment, the U to E. These are going to hold the keys to uh, our understanding of the labor market.